A customer sent in their power supply for a Samsung TV with model number UN55B8000, and the issue they're experiencing is that the TV was cycling on and off continuously. Now, they did state they did try to fix it themselves, but were unable to do so successfully. So let's take a closer look and see if we can fix it. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Nick. I started Nick's TV Repair more than a decade ago, and since then have fixed over 27,000 devices. All right, let's begin. First thing I'm noticing, there are two transistors taped to the transformers here. Those are the ones they replaced, and I'm also noticing noticing there is a fuse over here that is soldered on top of the old fuse, which I'm assuming is defective. My multimeter is in continuity mode, so we get a beep when we get a short. And I want to first make sure these transistors are shorted, and they are. And the second one, the second one is not shorted, so only one of these two is bad. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit on the parts they replaced. So this was the fuse and we don't have a short, so the fuse is blown. It looks like these are the transistors they replaced. No short, and we still have a short, so it looks like the transistors replaced are defective. Let's go ahead and remove this, and well, let's first start by desoldering this whole thing. We'll desolder the heatsink next. And I doubt I got it all on the first try, but let's see. All right, it looks like maybe I have still a little bit of solder on my heatsink on these two pins on the right. So we'll use the desolder wick to get the rest. And there we go. All right, before we unscrew the transistors, let's identify where the shorts are. No short. No short. Aha, so we have a short. So these two pins right here were shorted to one another. So that goes to this transistor, and then the trace goes here, which is the transformer. And then if we keep following, we have a resistor here. So this says 473, which I believe should be 4,700 ohms and yet we're getting 100 ohms. So this goes here, which goes here. Oh, and that makes sense because there's a 100 ohm resistor right here. So what I'm measuring is not this resistor, but I'm just measuring this resistor and that's our path. Okay, so that's actually normal, okay. What is this diode reading 100? Because it goes through here, so that also makes sense. So I just rotated the board. We're gonna take a look over here. These two are transistors. This one might be a diode. Yeah, so this one's a diode. We don't have shorts, no shorts, no shorts. Oh, wait a minute, I just found something. The transistor here was shorted on the right side, but I actually am realizing we still have a dead short over here on the left side. Okay, so we do have a dead short here. All right, I found the issue. Looking at our traces here, these two are shorted to one another, not supposed to be. If we follow this one here, it goes to this transformer. The transformer is supposed to be shorted to this pin over here, which then shares a pin over here, which then shares a pin over here. So that is supposed to be shorted and that I believe is normal. However, what is not normal is this capacitor is shorted over to this leg, which then leads back over here. So this capacitor has a dead short. And if we flip the board over, I actually thought this was black silicone from being attached to the heatsink prior, but it's actually the capacitor completely fracturing open um, and breaking. So this is a shorted capacitor. So we're gonna remove it out of circuit, and I'm very confident that when we do, we'll find out that the short is gone. So now that it's out of circuit, let's do another measurement. And sure enough, out of circuit it is shorted. That's not supposed to happen. Our short is gone, and shorts are gone. All right, so let's see. This one states it is 223J, 800 volts. So I don't actually have an exact match. I have a 223J, 1000 volts, so it is a higher voltage rating, which is okay. That's gonna be compatible. All right, so we'll solder down the first leg here. 
It's locked in. Let's do the second one. Now I think the legs are a little tall, so let's cut off the excess. Let's remove the transistors from the heatsink. So the originals are labeled K3797 and the replacements, well, it doesn't matter what replacements they use. So we'll just, cause we're gonna toss them out. Let's clean up the original thermal paste. So the original transistors were N-channel MOSFETs with 600 volts and 13 amps rating. The replacements we're gonna use are also gonna be 600 volts, but they are gonna be 20 amps rated. So we're gonna add a little bit of thermal paste and we're gonna spread it to the other one. All right, there we go. Now we have to line up the legs with the holes. Okay, let's see, does that work? Yep, there we go. Okay, and we're still having a little bit of difficulty with this one, which was when we were removing the heatsink, I was adding some heat to it and I did not come back to it to clear the hole, so that's probably why. But it looks like we're locked in now. I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to the top one here. We'll lock that one in. Add more solder to, our, to the original. Make sure that one feeds all the way through. Let's lock in the other side. There we go. And there we go. Okay, looks like, I just wanna recheck because it definitely looked like one of the pins came out and it did. So let's feed that back through. And now we can lock in our transistor legs. Let's cut off the excess. One last continuity check. No beeps, no beeps, no beeps, and no beeps. Okay, let's install our replacement fuse. This is a 3.15 amp, 250 volts. And let's make sure we have continuity, we do. All right, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the unit. And I just heard it click. Let's take a look. So we're in DC mode. And we're getting 386, 385 volts and steady. 384. Let's do a measurement on our capacitor. 195. Let's do a measurement on the transistor. 386, 385. Okay, let's take a look over here. We're gonna be looking for our standby voltage, which is 5.2, and that's what we're getting. Let's see, do we get our 12 volts? That's pins 19 and 21, which I believe are right here. Yep, and we are getting our 12 volts. To me, that does confirm we have a successful repair. The power supply is no longer constantly cycling on and off like the customer was experiencing, so we have another successful repair. And then just to clarify, I do believe the customer was very close to fixing this power supply. Both the transistors and the fuse were already replaced, but they just hadn't replaced this capacitor next to it. If you have a power supply you'd like to send in for us to fix, we offer flat rate services, which come with a one-year warranty. Those are available on our website, which I'll link in the description down below. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.